Mary Roy, educator and women's rights activist, died on Thursday. In 1986, Roy won a historic decades-long battle in the Supreme Court that secured equal inheritance rights of Syrian Christian women as their male siblings. In 2009, a Kerala court finally settled the inheritance, which she has left to charity. We have with us writer and editor Geeta Hariharan, who has also fought a crucial legal battle for women's rights. Hi, Geeta. Uh, Geeta, can you please begin by talking about Mary Loy's uh, legacy? And at a time when you have cases like Bilkis Banos, the rip is being released on remission, uh, what does her life and her struggle really symbolize today? Yes, let, um, let me begin by saying that at any point uh, in these last 75 years uh, post-independence, a life like Mary Roy's would have been something for us to look up to. Um, let me say why in many ways. First, of course, the most obvious answer is the landmark case that she fought for so many years, uh, not just in the courts, but in the community and even within the family. Right. So, uh, you know, this is really important to understand because in present times, uh, if it's something in the court, you at least have the support of people on social media and, you know, uh, uh, the, the civil society supporters and so on. But uh, here was a woman who um, uh, survived uh, a, a difficult uh, childhood, a uh, restrictive conservative community, but had ambitions. She studied um, uh, and came back, left uh, a, a, a bad marriage, and came back with her children and discovered that as a, as a Syrian Christian woman, that she was not entitled to her share of, uh, you know, whatever uh, was her father's property. And she was actually asked to leave um, a cottage in Uti that uh, belonged to her father. Uh, so the shock there, uh, and I think this is uh, especially important to remember, that for middle class women, uh, when you discover that uh, you might be middle class, you might have certain levels of uh, privilege compared to other women in this country, but because you are a woman, you know, uh, uh, you, you are deprived of your rights as a citizen, um, you do not have equal rights. And of course, if you belong to certain communities, um, it's even worse. So there are various things here. One is that she discovers as a, a Syrian Christian woman that she's entitled to not only to one fourth, I think, of An um, equal share. Uh, her, her brother's share, but or 5,000 rupees, whichever is less. So in other words, there's a specific amount um, you know, which is mentioned. So uh, I have to say that, you know, I really feel strongly about this because um, I discovered uh, similar, uh, the similar fallibility of the uh, Hindu personal law. So I think what we have to look at is that we have uh, brave women who have come forward and said, no, I will not accept this. I will fight it out in court. And that's what she did. And she did get uh, a judgment which uh, struck that down um, and so that uh, uh, Syrian Christian women, the Travancore Christian Succession Act uh, of 1916 uh, was no longer valid. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the value, the value of these cases, uh, again, that is important because... Um, is how other women use this procedure, what it does for other women, other Christian women in, uh, in that community. And uh, apparently there was a huge backlash and there were attempts uh, by um, uh, politicians as well as the church, in short, the establishment, the patriarchal establishment, to say, oh no, if this is with retrospective effect, you're going to have all kinds of cases within the family. Yes. So this is also a very important aspect of this case, which is that, you know, you valorize the family as if it is the unit that upholds equality. Well, it's not. So you have to look at all battles for equality at, in multiple settings. 
the court, yes. But if the law cannot be implemented in real life, there's just no point. So it has to be the community, the establishment, which includes the religious establishment, and then, of course, the family. Right, Gita. Gita, a little bit on the context today. Can women uh, like Mary Roy, uh, can there be more women like her today? Do the circumstances allow for that to happen? I think, you know, we have to, we have to recognize the very many brave individual women as well as collectives of women, uh, whether they're visible or not. Um, you know, if you happen to be uh, from a particular class background or involved in activities that bring you to the public eye, then people know this and we are grateful for that. We're grateful for that because we all need role models. Um, we all need people to look up to and say, oh, this is possible. I yes. too can, uh, you know, make my little modest contribution. Um, so that is there. But I think we must not forget that, uh, Will, you mentioned Bilkis Bano. I think uh, in a way she symbolizes this moment that um, all this talk about 75th year of independence, all this talk, all this lip service paid to uh, women's rights. Uh, and, and what is happening? Here is somebody who expressed faith in the judicial system, who was so brave, was so astonishingly brave, and stood up to uh, rapists, murderers, um, the, the terror of that experience as well as the aftermath. Right. And to, to actually let her down like this, it's not letting down just one woman. It's not letting down just the Muslim community. It's letting down all the women and all the citizens of this country. Because this is not a question of women versus men. It's a question of obscurantism, inequality versus progressive equality. Right. Uh, to return to Mary Roy again, uh, Gita, you fought your own legal battle. You fought long and hard. And did you actually ever meet her? Did you know her well? Is there a connection between the two of you? No, I never, I never met her. Of course, I, um, like uh, many of us, I know uh, Arundhati, her daughter. But uh, we do have uh, uh, a person in common, uh, the wonderful... Uh, advocate Indra Jai Singh, who was involved in both our cases. And um, this is what I mean about uh, the, uh, w you don't even really have to know all these women, but you know there is a community of uh, women, some you will never meet in your lifetime, you might not have a language in common, but you know it is this awareness that there are individuals as well as movements that support equality, which actually keep you going. That's right. what keeps one going. Uh, my own case, again, um, uh, the uh, personal laws are framed with a view to uh, upholding the rights, quote unquote, of, of the powerful and of uh, marginalizing those who are already marginalized to some extent or the other. So in terms of gender, in terms of caste and so on. So uh, not surprisingly, um, Hindu women too, you know, the cliche is always that uh, a, a Muslim women are uh, battered and oppressed and so on. So again, uh, like Mary Roy, it was quite a shock to me when I uh, went to the Reserve Bank to make um, a little investment uh, in the name of my minor son, and I was told I'm not the natural guardian. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, I stood there and said, do you know the meaning of the word natural? <laughs> you know, you feel especially indignant because there's such a premium placed on uh, um, marriage mother. and motherhood, and it's as if they're turning around and saying, oh, you know, well, you only have the responsibility, you don't have any rights over your child. And again, um, uh, the peculiar contradictions. Now, in the Mary Roy case, apparently, if uh, Sridhanam or some kind of dowry was either given or promised, 
yes. then even that 5,000 rupees wouldn't be given. But there is also a Dowry Prevention Act. Right. So really, it's a case of the right hand not knowing what the left hand is doing. And similarly, in my case, I discovered if I said that I wasn't married and if I said my children are illegitimate, then I was quite free to be the natural guardian. And okay. of course, the point of principle you want to make as a citizen of the country is to say, there's no such thing as an illegitimate child. It's the, this law that is illegitimate because it doesn't understand that you know, both parents have uh, an equal right to the child. So I think till we clean up uh, laws, till we find ways of not either beating uh, members of a religious community with a stick, nor diminishing them to just that identity. You know, we're, we're always going to have this kind of inequality persisting. And women who are struggling against it. Yes, yes. I think, though, these are small steps. Um, you, you know, in my case, it's not as if the Hindu Guardianship Act was struck down. Uh, so it was, it was a, a, a lukewarm victory. Um, I have to add that because, you know, though it was touted as a landmark judgment, it wasn't really because all they said was that the woman too can be the guardian, you know. So, of course, your first reaction is, well, thank you very much. Did I need the law to say that? But the, the point is that, again, uh, other people... Um, where, you know, marriages are breaking down, uh, there, there are custodial quarrels, who are in fear, uh, can use uh, the judgment as a precedent. And, and hopefully the small stepping stones will help others. I also want to add about um, Mary Roy that it was not just this case. You know, you have to look at the, the, uh, uh, this woman in, her, in the fullness of her achievement that... Um, she also uh, was an educator. Uh, she wanted to obviously bring about change um, in, in very pragmatic ways day to day in the classroom. And I think um, this is particularly inspirational because very often these days in these terrible times of division and hate speech and so on, you think sometimes you almost want to give up on adults and you think it's children. You know, if, if children are thought to think, to question, uh, to be independent-minded uh, and not swallow stereotypes, then there's hope for the world. And um, she set up a, a very interesting school where they were open-minded, willing to conduct experiments in, the, you know, in learning. And I think that too should be remembered. Thank you, Geeta. Thanks very much for joining us. And thank you very much for watching NewsClick. Do follow us on our social media and keep watching us. Thank you.